Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. This week, we'll look at Season 7 of Bellator Fighting Championships, complete with the Bellator Main Event of the Week. We're going to hear from Uriah Faber, and we have a new segment debuting next week. We're going to tell you more about that. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me is the master of Gangnam Style, Mr. Casey Austin. Don't you worry about my Gangnam Style. I got that down. Uh -huh. What I'm worried about is you, brother. And I was watching. This guy looks just like you, minus being Korean. You guys are, like, identical. You know what I'm saying? His name is Cyrus. His name, Cyrus. You're Cyrus. So let's... Okay. Just a little bit of this right here. And then yeah, you that's get not, the you're going to have to do some more. You're going to have to do some more. Ah, that's enough. It's not going to work. No? No, man. You look like a, a Chippendale dancer past his prime, brother. It's not oh, going to work. Come on. Come on, man. Anymore. Let's get to the news flurry. MMA news flurry time. UFC on Fuel from Nottingham went down last weekend. Not a bad card, actually. Had a lot of guys from the UK on this one. Some of the highlights, Gunnar Nelson looked great against Demarcus Johnson. He's starting to make his way. Brad Pickett knocked out Yves Labine. He, he did the Gangnam style. Then, of course, your heavyweight main event, Struve versus Miosic. Both guys on impressive winning streaks with Stipe never tasting defeat in MMA. That would change, of course, as Struve looked really good in this fight. Ends up getting the TK over the big Croatian. Talk about the slugfest here. Struve, he looks great, man. And of course, Stipe coming out in round one, he looked very poised. But man, Struve came on in round two and really dominated and put him over. And it's just a testament to Struve's um, experience in the yeah, big leagues, I think. exactly. He did taste defeat a couple of times early on. Now he has really got on a roll. He's asking for Fabricio Verdun That's in his next awesome outing. Fight. But you know, Stipe have... is not done by any means. You know, this is his push into the sophomore era of USC. Everybody tastes defeat at some point in the career. So I, I look for big things out of Stipe in the future still yet. And I think Struve is just right on his way. There's no telling. Yeah. The sky's the limit for that guy. Quick hit from Australian Fighting Championships as the main event has been shuffled. They instead go with UFC veteran Sean Big Sexy McCorkle for their main event against their heavyweight champion Soa Pelele. What do you think about this matchup, Casey? I think, I think it's good. great. McCorkle can talk. Oh, yeah. They and want type. characters. Type too. <laughs> they want characters down there in Australia, and that's what they're getting. Soa Pelele, UFC vet. McCorkle, UFC vet. Both of them meeting in the center to see what happens right there. Who controls Australia? I think it's to be a slugfest, and I think it, it's going to be a huge buildup, and I'm excited. There's going to be a lot of good stuff on that card. There's no telling who's going to be showing up there on AFC. That's AFCMMA.com.au. Now, finally, XFC returned to the great state of Tennessee, this time for XFC High Octane. Check out the results on this one. Some highlights included Nate Landwehr with his big win over Chris Wright. Maybe some questionable celebrating, my opinion, but it was intense. Joby Sanchez, the XFC fighter tryout winner with a quick triangle win over Chris Dunn. Shaba Bonus in a grueling war against Cornelius Godfrey out of West Virginia. That one could have went either way, but the veteran did get the nod in the decision. Sophia Baggerdai making her debut victoriously against Sarah Malloy. Scott Holtzman, hot sauce looking nasty in the co-main event, dominating Chris Coggins. Then, of course, it was the main event. It was indeed a wrap as Eric Reynolds takes out Lorenzo Borgamillo, sets up that big fight against Nick Newell. Can't wait to see that one. What stuck out for you in this whole event? Anthony Lamb and Drew Kennedy was my favorite fight. I did mention that, yes. Because it was back and forth so much. Of course, Drew coming out there, he gets rocked early gets put back, then ends up on top in rear control. Somehow Lemon gets out, uh, escapes, get back on top of Drew. Drew's busted open, yes. and then Drew ends back up on Lemon's back, secures the rear naked choke, and it happened in a very short amount of time. These guys were exhausted. looked like Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed. It was such a good fight. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, of course, Ian Boxhorn on the yes. undercard, a good friend of mine. Um, he he looks so good coming out. May maybe had a tough first round. It was very evenly matched, but man, once he secured top control, in the second and third, he completely dominated, looked fantastic in his first outing in the XFC. And then, of course, I, Scott Holtzman, the land weir, you, you, you see both of these guys being very dominant. It personified that East Tennessee, West Tennessee rivalry that they've got going on right now. I'd like to see these two guys go at it because they both have be so much energy. Land weir, got to watch out for the hot sauce crew. Though. Oh, man. I'm <laughs> All those hot sauce guys, you're right. XFC's next show will be in Music City. It's going to be nuts. XFC 21. Check out officialxfc.com for more information on that. Last week, another tough clip of the week competition, and the voting was really a four-man race until the finish. Only one clip could prevail, and it was from Elite Championship Cage Fighting, Caleb Savage with that gruesome standing guillotine. You can see more from the ECCF at EliteChampionshipCageFighting.com. Well, next week's finalists are definitely going to cash in on the win. What's on the line here, Casey? Well, this week's winner gets that Elevation Training Mass 2.0, the Shaker Cup, and pre workout formula from Gamma Labs and apparel from our friends at Bamp Fight Gear, Hunter MMA, Chris Fix, and Fight Chip. That's a lot of stuff right there. We have some great interviews coming up after the break. UFC Jariah Faber, XFC President
and John Prisco and more. But first, it's your first four finalists for Clip of the Week. Again, he needs to settle his hips in. If he gets too high, he's going to lose position. There he goes. Oh, wow. I don't think he's going to get it, though. No, I don't I know. Think he's These guys are both pretty experienced. Oh, he might be asleep. Yeah, that's... Yep! <laughs> Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and clicking Get On Air. In the very dangerous sport of mixed martial arts, one company has your back. Combat Sports Insurance is the Southeast's newest entity, insuring events, promoters, and fighters as well. Owner Jeremy Augusta, an area leader in insurance for the past decade and current MMA fighter for Team Oxendine, is focused on bringing the best coverage to your event and your fighters. Combat Sports Insurance, call today at 423-571-2519 or visit CombatSportsInsurance.com. The most spectacular event is coming to Abu Dhabi. Be part of the premier fight sport event in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi Warriors. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome back. Still a big preview and main event for Bellator coming up in the third round, but let's get to some interviews. XFC 20 not only had some big fights, but some big names were in attendance. Let's hear from them right now. All right, Casey Oxidon, I'm right here with Musen Kobri. We're here at XFC 20. One of his prodigies, Shaba Bonas, just come off a big win with Cornelius Godfrey. You know, we're, we're still trying to push. You know, UFC is the ultimate goal. That's about the only notch I don't have on my belt yet. So I want to make a run there, and I think I can give any 55er there a hard time. But, uh, you know, we're, we're taking it one step at a time. So I'm just scratching off goals as I go and enjoying life, man. There's nothing better than the life of a fighter and, and what we do. Stand by with the man, the one that runs the show, Mr. John Prisco. Congratulations on another great show, man. Top to bottom, there was a lot of action in this one. Uh, only one went uh, to the scorecards. That's pretty impressive. Uh, talk about how you feel about uh, the XFC brand after tonight. I, I, you know, I'm stoked about the XFC, brother. We just continue to impress every every show. Uh, we're consistent. We're the most consistent product in the industry. Listen, the only difference between us and Bellator is they have a higher frequency of fights. They're on a, a bigger network. Um, when we land on a bigger network and hopefully stay on access as well, then we're going to blow by Bellator like they're standing still. Uh, who do you think is going to come out victorious in the reynolds Newell fight? Because that is a big fight, and a lot of people are saying Reynolds has the upper hand here, of course, but I think they always say that, right? You know, there's stuff I saw in Eric tonight that didn't really fill me with confidence, so i got to lean a little bit further towards Nick maybe pulling it off. I still believe that one thing UFC can do better is learn how to storytell a lot better with their fighters. I believe it's been one of their, their, their downfalls. There's so many fights, though. There are so many fights, <laughs> but you know what? You choose two fights on a card, and you make a story about it. Why doesn't Romney say, this is what I'm going to do and why I should be president? But instead, he attacks Obama. And to me, that's just a real negative way of campaigning. That's a waste of just millions and, and millions of dollars, you know, taxpayer dollars. Like, you know, I want to see someone win on their own value and their own assets and merits rather than win because they smack talk the other guy more. You've probably seen some of the footage of Nick Newell and what he, he's accomplished. This is pretty amazing, right? Uh, what do you think of that fight coming up here in December? I think it'll be a great fight. And I, I met Newell a long time ago. Uh, he came to one of my seminars and, and I was really impressed with him. What, a, what an upstanding individual and a talented athlete. So uh, I'm expecting another knockdown drag out. Uh, I, I would probably give an advantage to Noel, though. Uh, if you got in there in the cage in the octagon with Michael Bisping, how would that go? I think it'd go well. I think I'd have an advantage on the ground. I wouldn't want to take a clean punch from the guy because he's so much bigger. But, you know, for those who know 
martial arts, getting hit on the button is the scary thing, and I think he'd have trouble hitting me. Although I have a, a great big chin here, I think he might have trouble get, getting to it. So uh, it, 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 it'd be an interesting fight. I would do it. Yeah. Let's do it, Bisping. Let's do it on uh, the internet. We can uh, do like some sparring. We'll charge people and have an exhibition bout. You can check out the full interviews on our official YouTube page, which is right there on the screen. Now, we are always coming up with new ways to stimulate your MMA minds. And for that reason, we're debuting a segment from our ancient past. It's called Super Mega Battle Fight. And it already sounds One cool. of my favorites. It's a lot of fun. Now, we've put together a committee of some of the biggest names in the sport, fighters, legends, coaches, journalists, to determine the winner every time we do the contest. This time around, it's going to be you and I, Casey, all right? So we're going to do this one, a quick four-man tournament, classic movie BAMF. So you know who I'm talking about, right? B-A-M-F. No. You got that? Just like band fight gear. Now we have John Wayne, Charles Bronson taking on each other, and then you have Sean Connery taking on Clint Eastwood. The winners will meet in the finals. First, John Wayne, Charles Bronson. I think it has to go to the dude, John Wayne. The dude, brother. I mean, dude, that's you simple, got Bronson, right? a great cowboy in his own right, and the dude had a death wish. He did. But the Duke's the man. All right, so John Wayne moves on. Sean Connery, of course, was very famous as James Bond, had a lot of action roles, taking on Clint Eastwood, who's still a pretty tough dude, you know, when he's not talking to chairs and such. So what do you think about this one? With James, Bond, Connery, Clint Eastwood. James Bond's tough, shaken, not stirred. Yeah, all right. Very nice car, but no way he takes out Clint Eastwood, brother. Yeah. No way. Now, I, I could see that. He had the spaghetti westerns, right? Yeah. Dirty Harry, all yeah. that good stuff, all the one-liners. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us in the finals, John Wayne versus Clint Eastwood. This yeah. is the fight people would like to see, am I right? Oh, yeah. So I, I'm taking the Duke in this one. I think sheer size, I just think he'd be a tougher guy, hand-to-hand -hand battle. I think John Wayne wins it. Well, I disagree. I think you're going to see Clint Eastwood turn it around. I mean, the Duke takes it round one. The size, the, the mass, he, it takes it. But Clint Eastwood has staying power. All right. Halfway through round two, he starts to pick it up. Round three, he takes out the Duke with magnum force. All right. <laughs> We're going to have to agree to disagree on this one. And this is what it's all about. It's not going to be up to us. It's going to be to our committee, which is going to be a lot of fun. Now, we're going to have the official debut of Super Mega Battle Fight next week. We have a Bellator preview main event after the break. But right now, four more finalists for Clip of the Week. You hear the call from Villager's Corner saying, Borg about choking there. Oh, yeah. and this and is it. it. This is the finish. Okay, okay, okay. It is good night, Irene. Both of these guys have some serious power behind those gloves. Oh, Rob Wayborn! Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. Coming soon, a mixed martial arts spectacle, the like of which the Middle East has never seen. The Abu Dhabi Warriors are coming. There will be knockouts, submissions, and more bone crushing than you can handle. Buckle up, funsters. Don't blink. Abu Dhabi Warriors 1 comes to you live from the Adnec Exhibition Center on November 2nd at 7 p.m. local time. Be there. I think for my son, he could have collapsed many times. I'm looking to be a young champion. I feel like I'm ready for the top. If he says he's going to be the middleweight champ, I believe him. No, very directed with his goals. Very good family guy, very serious. My daughter is my biggest fan, and uh, no one could argue with that. You know, I'm betting on Chris, 100%. I just don't see anyone stopping him. I'm confident. I know I can beat him, and I just want the shot now. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. It's 
Time for your third and final round. Cyrus Fees alongside Casey Ox and I. Bellator Fighting Championships officially in Season 7, and they have some big fights on the horizon. Of course, four more tournaments to look at. Featherweight, lightweight, welterweight, and a heavyweight tournament. We're really excited about that. First time they've ever done that. Exciting times for the company, really. They got Spike TV on the horizon. They're looking good. They've got Spike. They've got MTV involved. Uh, a lot of big network push, and all their fighters are out there are, you know, doing big things in all different weight divisions. I'm excited to see what happens. I think it's going to be great. Now, Bellator 76 on Friday, October 12th from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. The featherweight tournament's going to begin, but I believe all eyes are going to be on Eddie Alvarez. Could be a swan song against Patricky Pitbull. I think a lot of people want to see this fight. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens to Eddie after this. Eddie fight. is so exciting, and Pitbull is going to make a, a strong push. He is always a tough fighter, uh, but I'm anxious, as always, to see Eddie out there. Uh, of course, he lost to Chandler a little while back, but then came back looking so good against Aoki, so I'm anxious to see what he pulls out of the hat this time. Oh, man, it's going to be exciting to see what happens to Eddie Alvarez. UFC, Bellator, who knows? Bellator 77 will commence from Reading, Pennsylvania the next weekend on the 19th. This time the lightweights get started. A lot of Russian influence in this one. They're bringing a lot of Russians over. The Russian nightmare is what I call this. Yeah, Makiev, Sadalev, Sarnovsky are all going to fight in the quarterfinals. Rich Clemente is going to be meeting Sarnovsky. I think that's going to be a great fight. And we can actually see the Russians just really clean house in this event. Yeah, and Rich Clemente always comes. He's got a great fanfare. He pushes it. A very, very tough guy. So I'm anxious to see Rich in there in Bellator. I think it's going to be great to see that one. Then, of course, seven days later on the 26th, the fights are going to roll into Dayton, Ohio for Bellator 78. We're going to see the welterweight semifinals. And how about this feature fight, including Brian, the Predator Rogers. He's a Cleveland native. And then the return of the 115-pound women's champion, Zola Gurgel. Everybody's been waiting to see her. She's been injured, but now she's ready to rock. Of course, you got Rogers, who always fighting hard, big, heavy banger, one of those NAAFS guys, yes. just like we uh, Stipe that you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Zola Gurgel. Gel, man, this chick is tough, and she's one of those that could potentially make a rise to be the greatest in the world at some point. Right. Uh, the only reason when we did our, our rankings a while back that, that she wasn't up in there in that top five was because of the knee injury and, and her time away from the sport. Now she's back, and she's back with a vengeance. She is out there to put a name out there. Now, of course, definitely a lot to be excited about with Bellator, and there's really no telling where this company's going to go once they move over to Spike TV. It's Bellator.com for more information, but right now, let's get to our main event of the week. It's one of the Predator's biggest fights. That's right, Brian Rogers as he battles Victor Viana from Bellator 61. And Jeremy May inside the cage, main event of the week. We'll open this 185 pound tournament quarterfinal round with Vitor Viana versus Brian Rogers. You see Brian Rogers, he is in the black trunks. His opponent, Vitor Viana, is in the white trunks. Round number one. The start is going to tell us a lot. Brian Rogers, a very fast starter. Outside kick by Rogers. Jason Herzog is the referee for this, as well as tonight's other three middleweight tournament quarterfinal round fights. Yana was emphatic to us, Jimmy. He said, I want to get back to what I do best, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I don't want to stand like I did for my three fights. And on cue, he shoots a takedown. I think that's what he was waiting for, Brian Rogers to get aggressive so he could change level and try and take him down. But Brian Rogers, short, stocky, very strong. Not an easy guy to take down. Yana staying tenacious, looking for the takedown. You see the strength in the wide base from Brian Rogers. Remember, he's used to finishing in the first round. It might be part of Yana's. It might be part of Yana's strategy to drag him into a fight. Just hang on until the later round. Soft inside kick by Rogers. More of a range finder. Then misses with the overhand right. Two to the body. Yana right back. Viana's not firing back. He's not counterpunching. He's not giving a very dangerous striker a reason to not punch at him. You see, Rogers did not pounce. He, he wants off. He wants nothing to do with the ground game of Vitor Viana. Did not want to fall into Viana's guard. Never even considered going down. I mean, one world title is hard enough to get. Vitor Viana has two. Big tentative from both men. Under two minutes now remaining in round one. Viana. Get some distance and stand up. Doesn't want to be there. Good call, Jimmy. Just like that. Rogers does not want to play on the ground. That's one of the things you have to learn coming from a jiu-jitsu background into MMA is guys want to stand up. They want to pull away. They generally don't want to do that in a jiu-jitsu fight. They stay and try and pass. In MMA, they're going to try and get back on their feet. Got to hold them there. Rogers, you see, pulling out with the jab. Trying to find the range. 
Outside kick by Brian Rogers. See some blood there. Looks like there might be a cut over the right eye of Vitor Viana. Open up by one of those left hooks. Almost an up kick again. Partial up kick by Viana. The second that he's thrown in round one. Viana has had two pro Muay Thai fights. He won them both, but again, he's made a name for himself in combat sports in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's a two time world champion. Outside kick by Rogers. A little more stay on that. Oh, that was a good run. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Well, it's that time, time to wrap up another episode, but first, it's your last four finalists for Clip of the Week. Now that's a dirty dozen, so let's check them all out, 1 through 12. Oh, wow. I don't think he's going to get it, though. I don't know. I think he's These guys are both already. pretty experienced. Oh, he might be asleep. Yeah, that's... Yeah. TV.com and vote. The winner will take home that awesome prize package from Elevation Training Mask, Gamma Labs, Bam Fight Gear, Hunter MMA, Crucifix, and Fight Chicks. It's a lot of good stuff there. Find us on Facebook, follow us at MMAITC on Twitter, and subscribe to YouTube for the exclusive interviews. I'm Cyrus Fee. I'm Casey Oxendine. And we'll see you next week Inside, Inside the Cage. cage.